some footballers are almost universally loved or unanimously disliked. Angolo Kante or David Silva, for example, whilst you might not have liked them, playing dazzling football against your own team at times, are pretty tough to dislike, and are, at the very least, widely respected, if not outright adored. El Haji Juf, Carl Henry, and Kevin Muscat, by comparison, are footballers that only a mother could love. And even she must struggle, in the case of Muscat, after nine months of him two-footing her womb. That is a joke about Muscat's thuggish style of play, by the way, suggesting that he had the same temperament as a fetus for comic effect. I am not suggesting that he has ever physically or sexually assaulted his own mother. There is absolutely no evidence to suggest that is the case, and I am more than happy to clear that up. But while some footballers are hated by a broad base of football fans, others are disliked only by a very specific set of fans. Tottenham Hotspur fans, for example, are not particularly fond of Sol Campbell for obvious reasons. Meanwhile, Sheffield United fans still haven't forgiven Carlos Tevez for the controversial role, shall we just say, that he played in relegating them from the Premier League. It is those types of players who are the focus of this video, but rather than being hated by the supporters of a single specific club, these players are hated by an entire nation. So with thanks to James B 1312 v 2 who suggested this idea, I don't think that can have been his given name, you wouldn't have thought, but you never know, here are seven footballers who are hated in a specific country. Seventh, Peter Crouch, Trinidad and Tobago. Peter Crouch is hated not only in Trinidad, but also in Tobago, two countries, which means that he must have done something really bad. Not really, that was just another one of my absolutely brilliant jokes. Trinidad and Tobago, or the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, to give it its full title, is very much just one country. And it is one of only six countries worldwide, which contain the word and in their name. Five points, if you can guess the other five without cheating, I will reveal them at the end of this video. With a population of fewer than 1.4 million people, Trinidad and Tobago is smaller than the likes of Kosovo and Bahrain, and the Caribbean island nation only declared independence from the United Kingdom in 1962. Perhaps it is little surprise that the Soccer Warriors, Trinidad and Tobago's national football team, are not regulars at the World Cup then. But it was fitting that 44 years on from gaining independence, a Trinidad and Tobago squad containing the likes of Shaka Hislop, Dwight York and Stern John should be drawn against England in the group stage of the 2006 World Cup. It was another English-based Trinidadian and Tobaginan in the form of then Gillingham centre-back Brent Sancho, who was at the centre of the enormous controversy that has led Peter Crouch to be the most unpopular European in Trinidad and Tobago since the Spanish conquistador Antonio Cedeno in the 1530s. Many England fans had expected a comfortable win against Trinidad and Tobago, but they would be in for a surprise. Trinidad and Tobago kept England at bay for 83 minutes, having also drawn their opening game 0-0 with Sweden, but with only seven minutes left on the clock, David Beckham put a trademark right-footed ball into the box, Peter Crouch got up highest, and headed the ball into the back of the net. At first glance, it looked like a perfectly legitimate goal. So, I do have some sympathy for the officials in the pre-VAR era for not disallowing it. But a slow motion replay and particularly stills such as this one reveal the ugly truth that would leave Trini football fans very reasonably feeling robbed. Crouch had a full fist of Sancho's hair as he headed the ball into the back of Shaka Hislop's net in an act that Sancho described as bodily assault. Crouch claims that he had no idea what he was doing or even what he had done until he saw the photographs after the game, claiming that he was just looking to get any kind of leverage that he could to climb highest and head the ball. And he did make an apology to the people of Trinidad and Tobago on the Peter Crouch podcast. At the time, Trinidad and Tobago were the smallest country ever to make the finals of a FIFA World Cup, since surpassed by Iceland. 
and they haven't qualified for a World Cup since, so perhaps it is unsurprising that they still haven't forgiven Crouch, who is fairly well liked among English football fans, whether he ever played for their club or not, and he certainly doesn't have a reputation for being a particularly dirty player. Sixth, Jordan Shakiri and Granit Xhaka, Serbia. Jordan Shakiri is, without any shadow of a doubt, the most hated footballer in Serbia. But given the intense dislike of Granit Xhaka in Serbia as well, and the overlapping reasons for that dislike, I thought I would break protocol and include them both. I know, I am a maverick. They said that it couldn't be done. The title says seven footballers who are hated in one country. This means that there are actually eight. You could, quite legitimately, report me to trading standards, but this is Alfie Potts Harmer we're talking about here. He doesn't play by the rules of ordinary football YouTubers. He's a disruptor, a bohemian, a rebel, and an outsider. Where were we? Oh yeah, Jordan Shakiri and Granit Xhaka are just two of a number of footballers who, either themselves or at least their parents, were refugees to Switzerland from the former state of Yugoslavia having fled during the Yugoslav Wars of 1991 to 2001. Those conflicts were pretty brutal, to put it mildly, resulting in almost 150,000 deaths and an estimated 4 million people being displaced. Both Shakiri himself and Xhaka's parents were born in a part of Yugoslavia that now forms modern-day Kosovo to Kosovar Albanian parents. In 2008, Kosovo declared independence, but Serbia does not recognise Kosovo as being an independent state. You may have heard the slogan, Kosovo is Serbia, online in the past, which has become something of a meme, but is indeed the official position of the Serbian government. At the 2018 World Cup, when Switzerland faced Serbia, Xhaka and Shakiri both scored in a 2-1 win, and both celebrated their goals by performing the so-called double-headed eagle gesture, which is used to symbolise Albania, reminiscent of the Albanian flag, and ethnic Albanians. Both players received fines for what FIFA deemed to be political and offensive messages, which threatened crowd disturbances. Whether they are offensive is obviously a matter of opinion, but they certainly outraged Serbian fans and politicians, much to the delight of many Kosovo supporters and politicians. Both players are widely despised in Serbia, but there is a special disdain held in Serbia for Shakiri. At the time, Serbia goalscorer Aleksandar Mitrovic hit back, questioning why, if Shakiri loved Kosovo so much, he didn't take the opportunity to represent them instead of Switzerland. Shakiri also wears boots which each display the Kosovo and Switzerland flags side by side, and when he came up against Albania in 2014, he added the Albania flag to his boots, and he didn't celebrate his opening goal in that game. Such is the hatred for Shakiri in Serbia, that when Liverpool travelled to Belgrade to face Red Star in the Champions League in 2018, they chose to leave Shakiri back home in Merseyside. Outside of Serbia, while some may be Frustrated with Shakiri's inability to realise his full potential, he is viewed as a much more benign figure, now playing for Chicago Fire, who is capable of producing moments of sheer magic with his wand of a left foot. Fifth, Diego Maradona, England. An obvious one, but an interesting one nonetheless, and it is one that I've always been a bit conflicted about. Diego Maradona is one of the most complex and divisive characters in the history of world football, and also one of, if not the most ferociously talented footballers to have ever laced up a pair of boots. As someone who was born and raised in England, I feel as though I was brought up to detest Diego Maradona. I can remember walking around the office where my dad worked as a kid, when I was a kid, not him, just to be clear, when he had been forced to take me with him one day. It must have been in 2007 when Maradona first fell seriously ill, and someone had put up a photo of a rather unwell-looking Diego up on their desk, accompanied by the words, get well soon, and an expletive that I won't repeat for reasons of YouTube monetization. 
There are many legitimate reasons to dislike Maradona. The very credible allegations of domestic abuse following a video being leaked, which appear to show him hitting his former fiance, chief among them. But the reality is that, one, that isn't the reason why most England fans dislike Maradona, and two, Maradona is still adored across much of the world outside of England. Even in England, particularly since Maradona's death, I think there is, at the very least, a begrudging respect and acknowledgement that the man behind the hand of God had more God-given talent with the ball at his feet, so to speak, than any player that English football has ever produced. Nonetheless, if you score quite possibly the most high-profile handball of all time in a World Cup quarter-final, which knocks one team out of the World Cup, whilst you go on narrowly to win it, people from that country are always likely to harbour a little bit of ill feeling towards you. That ill will towards Maradona never really went away, even after all these years, and even though Peter Shilton still should have comfortably beaten Maradona, who stood at just 5 foot 5 inches tall, to the ball, even with Maradona, aided by an outstretched hand. Maradona was a cheat, like lots of players. But only in England, perhaps, is Maradona better known as a cheat than he is as a footballing genius. Fourth, Iron Robin, Mexico. I was a little bit apprehensive about including Iron Robin in this seven because there was a time, not all that long ago, when I think he was quite broadly disliked, not just in Mexico. Robin always had a reputation for going down easily, shall we say, particularly in the box, and particularly for his rather flamboyant swan dives, which were so dramatic that even when the Dutchman genuinely was fouled, sometimes you hoped that the decision might go against him. At the 2014 World Cup, age 30, Robben's diving was probably at its peak. And seven years on, Mexico fans certainly haven't... No, it's eight years, isn't it? Eight years on, Mexico fans certainly haven't forgiven Robben for his behaviour against them in a crucial round of 16 tie. Thrice Robben went down in the box, very elaborately, in search of a penalty and on two occasions, there appeared to have been no contact whatsoever. Robben even admitted, after that game, that there was no contact for the first, and that he was wrong to dive. The third time, however, when there was just the slightest of contact from Rafael Marquez, again Robben threw himself to the ground, and this time, the referee pointed to the spot. What's more, Robben's flop came in injury time, with the scores tied at one all. And when Klaas Jan Huntelaar converted from just 12 yards out, he broke a hundred million Mexican hearts. Mexico have reached the round of 16 in each of the last seven World Cups and haven't gotten beyond that stage since they hosted the tournament in 1986. As a massive football-obsessed nation who had led in that game, Mexico felt Robin had illegitimately robbed them of their dream. The words, no era penal, which translates to, it was not a penalty, immediately became a slogan, meme, and hashtag in Mexico, one which is still etched in every Mexican football fan's mind. Robin insisted that, whilst he had dived earlier in that game, those dives had no influence on the outcome of the match, and when he went to ground to win the injury time penalty, which did decide the game, he had been fouled. To say that Mexicans remain unconvinced would be as much of an understatement as saying that Robben doesn't have very long hair. And even now, eight years on, there is still at least one No Era Penal tweet about Robben posted on Twitter every single day. Third, Thierry Henry, Republic of Ireland. There are a few footballers who aren't particularly well liked in the Republic of Ireland, despite Irish football fans having a reputation for being among the most affable and high-spirited of any fan base in the world. Most recently, Jack Grealish and particularly Declan Rice have drawn the ire of Ireland fans, for reasons that I'm sure do not need explaining. The most hated player in Ireland, however, hands down, at least from my experience, would still have to be Thierry Henry, the second player to earn an inclusion in this seven, off the back of a very high-profile handball. Unlike Diego Maradona against England, 
Henri's handball didn't come at the FIFA World Cup, but in World Cup qualifying. Finalists in 2006, France finished second behind Serbia in their 2010 qualifying group, and were drawn against fellow group stage runners-up Ireland in one of four crucial playoff games. In the first leg, in Dublin, France won 1-0 courtesy of a second-half Nicolas Anelka strike. In the second leg, in Paris, Ireland were much the better team, and though they won the game 1-0, sending the tie into extra time, they really ought to have put the tie to bed by that stage. It was in the 103rd minute that Henri's infamous Le Hand of God moment happened, as he twice used the palm of his hand to keep Florent Malouda's deep ball towards the back post in play, which allowed him to quite simply square the ball for William Gallas to head home. Almost the entire Ireland team raced to the officials, but they weren't interested. Henri admitted, firstly to Richard Dunn and later to the television cameras, that he had illegally handled the ball. Not that the replays put that in any doubt, but he maintained that it was the referee's job to spot law-breaking like that and to punish it. The backlash against both Henri and the referee Martin Hansen supposedly led both to consider retiring from international football, though neither did, and France imploded at the 2010 World Cup, where they finished bottom of their group following a huge squad bust-up. Disgraced former FAI CEO John Delaney and the Irish government demanded that the game either be replayed or that Ireland be made the 33rd team at the 2010 World Cup, an unprecedented request which was quite literally laughed off by FIFA and Sepp Blatter. FIFA did end up paying Ireland 5 million euros to settle that dispute, and the backlash following Henri's handball forced FIFA to commission an investigation into how technology could be used to help referees, which ultimately led to the creation of video assistant referees, better known as VAR. So, Ireland's hatred of Henri has had a significant legacy within the world of football, for better or for worse. Ireland still haven't qualified for a World Cup since 2002. Second, Emerson Sheikh, Iraq. Following a couple of very high-profile examples that will most likely already have been familiar to most of you, I thought I'd throw in a bit of a curveball in second, since I don't talk nearly enough about Iraqi football on this channel. That is not to say that I don't talk about Iraqi football at all, I would highly recommend this documentary entitled Football and Fear in Iraq under Adai Hussein if you're still looking for something interesting to watch after this, but still not nearly enough. Adai Hussein had been dead for five years by the time of Iraq's 2010 World Cup qualifying campaign in 2008, however, which meant that Iraq's players could concentrate on their football without fear of death or torture should they lose. Drawn in a tough group up against Australia, Qatar, and China, Iraq narrowly missed out on reaching the next round, losing 2-0 to a Qatar team that was packed full of naturalised Qatari citizens who were born and raised in South America and elsewhere, as Brazilian-born Fabio Cesar Montezine scored both goals for Qatar against them. That might seem a little bit iffy, but it was all within FIFA's eligibility rules at the time. The fact that Qatar fielded Emerson, however, or Emerson Sheikh, as he became better known in Qatar, was not. The Brazilian had previously played six times for Brazil's under-20s back in 1999, thus rendering him ineligible to represent Qatar, and opening up the possibility for FIFA to strip Qatar of their three points when against Iraq, which would have seen Iraq progress instead of them. FIFA confirmed that the breach of laws had happened, but claimed that the Qatari FA had not been responsible for any wrongdoing. I know, right? And therefore, no retrospective action would be taken. Iraqis were understandably furious, making Emerson persona non grata in Iraq, though as with a few inclusions in this seven, perhaps their anger would be better attributed elsewhere, such as with FIFA in this instance. First, Luis Suarez, Ghana. As with Iron Robben, there was a time when Luis Suarez was quite generally disliked within the world of football, 
And as with Diego Maradona, you could argue that there are very legitimate reasons for disliking the Uruguayan. Suarez has a charge sheet which is almost as long as Al Capone's, with his diving, biting and stamping, leading many to label him as both a menace and a cheat. Even more seriously, Suarez was infamously found guilty by a three-man panel of racially abusing Patrice Evra in 2011, and Suarez further outraged football fans when he refused to shake Evra's hand when the two teams next met. Nonetheless, hatred of Suarez largely seems to have dispersed in recent years, perhaps not among certain sets of supporters, but he has certainly been involved in fewer controversies over the last five or six years, whilst continuing to perform at a very high level. One group of football fans who don't appear to have much forgiveness for Suarez is Ghanaians, and indeed, football fans throughout much of Africa. Whilst there is a great rivalry between many African nations, when Ghana made it to the quarterfinals of the first World Cup to be held on African soil in 2010, almost all of Africa was willing them on to get past Uruguay and to reach the semis. Ghana took the lead just before half-time, but Diego Forlan levelled the scoreline in the 55th minute. The game went to extra time, and in injury time during extra time, Dominic Adie looked to have headed home the winner, only for Suarez to bat the ball off the line with his hand. Suarez was sent off, but Asamoah Jan failed to convert from 12 yards out, and Uruguay went on to win the shootout and break African and especially Ghanaian hearts. Jean later described Suarez as the most hated man in Ghana, more hated than any gangster or corrupt politician. In 2020, 10 years on from that incident, John Pansel maintained that Ghana still hadn't forgiven Suarez and never would, claiming that no African footballer would have cheated in the way that he did. Pansel's claims may have been slightly undermined by Jean himself, who stated that he would have done the same at the opposite end, but whatever your views on that particular issue are, the reality is that only Suarez actually did it, and the hatred that he still inspires in Ghana ensures that he takes top spot in this seven. That is it for today's video, but the other five countries with the word and in them, in case you were wondering and had made your guesses, along with Trinidad and Tobago, a Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sao Tome and Principe, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Without wanting to sound too much like Richard Osman on Pointless, genuinely, congratulations if you got all of them. Thank you, or, or even just any of them, you know, just congratulations, well done on, uh, you know, still being alive. Thank you all very much, as ever, for watching today's video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. I hope that that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s. You can also find me, personally, on social media, on uh, either Twitter or Instagram, via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so.